Greetings viewers, Aziz Draws here. A few of you have asked me about how I use gradient maps during the shading process for my illustrations. To answer your inquiries, I will try my best to explain my layer setup in Clip Studio Paint. Let's say the subject in the drawing is fully outlined, preferably in a vector layer. One could add a layer underneath for flat colors. This layer will be labeled Flats. One method of blocking out the flat colors is by using the Auto Select tool on the Line Art layer to select the surrounding areas. Hitting Ctrl Shift I to invert the selection, and then selecting the new layer and clicking the Create Layer Mask button to automatically create a clipping mask for your flats. Select the layer thumbnail, choose white or grayscale value, and then select Fill at the top. This is how we know the clipping mask is working. To set up the shading folder, click New Layer Folder. This folder will be labeled Shading. Afterwards, create a new layer within the folder and go to the Fill icon to cover the entire layer with white or any grayscale value of choice. Go to the layer drop down menu at the top. Go to New Correction Layer, and select Gradient Map. If you're familiar with gradient maps, then you know their purpose is to apply a color gradient to specific grayscale values. Because this gradient map is a correction layer, we can adjust the gradient while also shading the main value layer in real time. Typically for the colors of my gradient map, I like to have warm hues where the light source directly hits the subject, a middle color that represents the light's termination on the subject, in other words where light starts to fall off the subject, and cool hues where shadows will be placed to complement the light. The terminator color falls off fairly quickly, so the position for the color on the gradient bar is shortened. Once the gradient map is adjusted to one's liking, hit OK. Select the shading folder, and change the layer blend mode to multiply. Afterwards, select clip layer to below. This will prevent the shading layer from going past the alpha of the flats layer. Now for the fun part, shading. Pick a brush of your choosing. Personally, I like to use wash brush, and start off with black as your color. You'll notice that depending on the amount of black you apply with the brush, the further down the gradient map you will go. Lighter values show the warm colors, and darker values show the cool colors. Understanding the form of your subject is incredibly useful here, because that information will help you determine how close or how more spread out the gradient should be in certain areas. For example, the top of Spidey's head is more round, so the light fall off is going to be smoother, but due to the shape of the nose, the fall off is sharper. Knowing the light source direction is crucial too, because now you can add appropriate shadows with sharp gradient transition, such as the right trap behind the sternocleidomastoid? Sternocleidomastoid. There we go. Be sure to take advantage of the line art layer when selecting areas that need to be shaded differently from the rest of the subject. For example, with the line art layer selected, choose the lasso tool and make sure the setting is on add to selection. After that, pick the auto select tool, make sure the setting is on remove from selection. Now select outside of the hand to remove access parts of the selection. If there are any remaining areas that weren't removed from the auto select tool, using the lasso tool and setting it to remove can help clean up the selection. Now you can return to the shading layer. If you don't need to see the area you selected highlighted, go to view drop down menu and uncheck selection border. Once the shading is complete, you can now add colors to your flats layer. To make coloring easier, select your line art layer and turn on set as reference layer. Grab the fill tool, Make sure the refer multiple box is checked and the reference layer icon is highlighted. Now you can fill away. Be sure to look out for small areas where pixels may need to be filled in. Let's say you want to adjust the gradient map after coloring your subject. Double click on the gradient map layer thumbnail and it will return to you the gradient map dialog we worked on earlier. I'll go for a more cool pink termination color. And there you have it. It's up to you if you want to add highlights or other value details, but that is how I set up my shading with gradient maps. I hope this video was useful. If there's any questions, let me know, and thank you for your time.